Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Vet Surgeriatics. So I welcome you to another lecture in the series Canine Diseases. Okay, today we will be discussing regarding the parasitic diseases. If you haven't watched the previous video, there is already one video on, on canine pyoderma. You can check that out in the, in the playlist canine diseases. Okay, this is the second video. We will be discussing regarding the parasitic dolmatitis. Okay, so welcome. So what are the causative organisms? The causative organisms can be tick, flea, lice and mites. Okay, tick, flea, lice we will discuss in one category and we will discuss uh, mites in another category. In the same lecture, we will covering all of these. So in mites, two mites are very very important. One is Demodex, that is Demodicosis, uh, disease is known as Demodicosis. Another is Sarcoptis mites, which caused, which caused scabies or mange. Demodicosis can be of juvenile or adult. Juvenile means when it affects 3 to 18 month old dog or an adult with more than 18 month. Okay, so we will be discussing the in detail regarding all the symptoms that are the treatments are adopted and different uh, pictorial presentations also we will discuss everything. Okay, now first what are the symptoms if your dog is affected with or infested with tick, flea and uh, lice. Usually you not find any gross lesions. Okay, because they are not that harmful only they may cause anemias because they suck blood. But in long run, you may find some inflamed nodules or papules are their bite point. We will see in the pictures also. Okay. So, usually they are controllable, not eradicable. You cannot er eradicate tick, flea, lice. Okay. It is very difficult to er eradicate, but you can control them. Okay. So, these are some pictures. Here, this is a tick infected case. You can, you can see multiple ticks here and there in the inner side of the ear. Okay, and see the lesion which can be caused by the ticks at the bite point there may be local inflammatory reaction. If you see these erythemas, the ring erythemas, here is the tick. Okay, at the bite point there will be local inflammation and it may cause some erythema. Sometimes it may result in papules. Okay, but they are not much of, uh, don't cause much harm unless, uh, until and unless they are heavily infested with the organism. Here are some images of fleas. Okay, here notice this is a flea. It is very difficult to recognize fleas in a black color uh, animal. Okay, if the coat color is black, it is very very difficult to identify this. Only by regular combing you can know that whether they are infested with fleas. Here you can see these fleas. Okay, this is an image of actually cat. Okay, fleas. Now some images of lice. Lice are usually smaller than fleas. They are very difficult to diagnose in naked eye but you can see okay this is a image through a otoscope you are viewing the lice here is the lice this one is the lice here this one is the lice okay through otoscope this is the slide presentation under 4x objective you can find the lices okay lice now what are the methods that you through which you can diagnose that this is the infestation by the tick, flea, uh, tick, flea or lice. Usually naked eye visualization for tick and flea you can easily visualize from uh, a naked eye but for lice you may need a microscopic examination. But um, you see flea dart one thing flea dart it is actually pickle matter of flea which is usually black in color while combing you can easily see this flea dart and you can guess or you can say uh, or you can diagnose that it is infested with the flea and in case of lice you will find the white nits in Odia it is Nikha okay so white nits uh, nits these white nits can uh, diagnose the condition as lice infestation okay so these are some methods through which you can diagnose mostly it is by naked eye okay by naked eye you can visualize this tick flea and lice okay so diagnosis is very very easy Next, what are the treatments? Treatment options that you can opt for the infestations. Most of the treatment options are basically topical preparations. Okay, so first one you can do a manual removal for ticks. 
you can do this manual removal by applying tweezers or by the help of tweezers there are very good videos in youtube through which you can see a proper removal of tick you see if suppose you are removing a tick okay from the skin if you have not taken any care regarding the mouth parts if you are removing a tick and the body is out but the mouth part is the on the skin there will be severe allergic response okay so be careful while removing the ticks manually okay uh, there are good videos as i told you can refer in the youtube and you can do the manual removal but this is for uh, local in uh, uh, local area uh, infestation okay for generalized you may not be able to remove all those ticks so then you can go for the topical for flea and lice you can use a very uh, combs different type of combs for fleas and lice are also there you can use combing to remove the fleas but the best option is the topical preparations okay you can find use omitraz which comes as a solution cupronil which is basically a spot on and a spray permethrin methoprin pyrifoxifin selamectin metflubizone carbaryl and propoxo there many of the compounds most of them are spotons and also you will find some shampoos and sprays all those materials can easily be available in your nearby market or nearby pet shop you can use them okay and uh, you can control this tick flea and lice you see i am telling control you cannot exactly eradicate the tick flea and lice it is very very difficult to completely eradicate the tick flea lice because you see they the life cycle of the tick flea lice you will find they lay eggs they lay eggs not only on the skin of the uh, animal they lay eggs in the burrows suppose you have a sofa so under the sofa they may lay egg or if your dog is traveling throughout your home there will be different parts of the home where they may lay eggs and then they will come and again reattach to the body of your dog so basically by spotton formulation or the sprays you can simply control the tick and flea and lice population not completely eradicate it is very very difficult to completely eradicate the population of the tick flea and lice okay so the treatment options that was a topical there is also systemic basically the oral tablets are available okay they are basically isojolins isoxazolins like that iso or you may prefer isojazolins whatever it is okay so they are uh, they are usually given at monthly interval or you can say four weeks interval and they are basically chloride channel blocker gaba mediated chloride channel blocker they do the paralysis of the nervous system okay they do the paralysis of the nervous system of the tick before they lay eggs and then the kill the ticks uh, if you'll go through the packet of these products you will see it is effective against tick flea and lice okay i will discuss about the research on the application on the mites also okay so the compounds are apoxalaner fluralaner lotilaner sarolaner okay and remember one thing about the isoxazolins so okay they are very very costly actually very very costly you see sarolaner which is available in our area in some parts you will see the minimum tablet rate for under 10 kg it is it comes according to the body weight less than 10 kg 10 to 20 20 to 40 like that minimum tablet one tablet rate is around 1000 rupees indian 1000 rupees for one tablet okay so it will give protection for one month 1000 rupees it is starting price okay, if your dog uh, weighs around uh, 20 to 40 kilo between the 20 to 40 kilo three tablets uh, it comes around 42000 rupees uh, sorry 4200 rupees i am sorry okay 4200 rupees for three tablets okay this is very very costly very very costly okay so you should know these options if you have a very rich client or who can afford these tablets you can simply prescribe they work very very well okay there are very good research that they work very well against the tick flea lice also now new researches uh, have come up which makes them effective against also mites okay we'll discuss that so this is all about the tick flea and lice next we'll go for demodicosis this is a very important disease okay mainly we will find in the summer season 
डेमोडेकोसिस इन डेमोडेकोसिस विल फाइंड पैची एलोपेसिया इट मे बी रिजनाल और इट मे बी मल्टीफोकल और डिफ्यूज विल सी दि फोटोग्राफ्स ऑल्सो विल फाइंड एरिदेमा सिल्वर टू ग्रे स्केलिंग विच इज नोन एज कोम डोन्स ओके कोम डोन्स और यू कैन से ब्लैक हेड कोम डोन्स एंड यू मे फाइंड पैप्यूज pruritus you will find some degree of pruritus in demodecosis but if you are comparing with the scabies okay in scabies itching is very very intense very intense pruritus but in case of demodex the degree is less but you will find some degree of pruritus so in long standing cases it may get lichenified or lichenification it means thickening of the skin and hyperpigmentation black colors there will be appearing pustul then after they will erode then also then crust formation these are long standing case, cases if they are not treated early okay you may find leaf adenomegaly the superficial leaf node may be swollen up and if there will be secondary infection by bacteria like streptococcus or staphylococcus you may find systemic signs like fever okay so these are the symptoms of the demodicosis now let us see some photographs here you can see the photographs here are some papules these are some papules okay the diagnosis is by the skin scraping examination okay by looking at the simply the lesion you may not appreciate the demodicosis but only you do the skin scraping you can tell demodicosis so you can see these are allopathic patch here there is some allopathic patch patch here multifocal this is a single or a focal single focal you can see the this is hyperpigmentation this you can see the black coloration is known as hyperpigmentation this is the demodicosis there are some other photographs also you see this is comb dons this is comb dons you can see this black raised heads okay silver to gray in color this is known as comb dons okay this is very characteristic to demodicosis and also hyperadrenocortism that is causing disease okay hyper adrenocorticism okay so you have to differentiate between the two usually the uh, diagnosis of the hyper adrenocorticism is a very costly matter so if the animal is responding to the treatment ivermectin treatment then it may be a demodicosis okay and here are some the slides here you can say these two are demodex species okay they are usually visible on a 10x objective and simply a deep skin scraping test can confirm your demodicosis okay you may not need a sophisticated test so this is also the pictures of demodicosis you can say the there are different patchy areas patchy alopecia also there is hyperpigmentation you can see this back black coloration here you can see you see this is a long standing case you can see these are the crusts okay these are the crusts here are some papules okay so this is a very long standing case and uh, you can see the erythemas areas red coloration erythemas areas okay so these are very specific to demodicosis another thing remember about the ears here the ear is not that much of affected okay there is a differentiating factor between the demodicosis and the scabies in scabies the ears will be affected first okay in demodicosis you may not find a very specificity towards the body parts okay but in case of scabies we will discuss it affects the hairless part first then after it migrates to other parts okay but in demodicosis there is not much of preference to body parts you can find anywhere in the body these are some pictures of demodicosis you can see here the chest portion okay here these are axilla this is ventral trunk or in the chest position here you can see the demodectic de lesions here you can see the black heads or comb dons here one here one there are some other comb dons okay this is very specific to demodicosis and hyperadrenocorticism okay hyperadrenocorticism these are some other pictures of demodicosis different region in paw region okay now this is the microscopic view of demodicosis here is a demodex species here one demodex species okay simple skin scraping deep you have to go for deep skin scraping examination can diagnose the condition 
as dermatocosis. You don't need any sophisticated laboratory to diagnose the dermatocosis. Now, the symptoms of scabies. We will discuss the dermatocosis and scabies side by side so that you can understand and difference it. In case of scabies, you will find papules, alopecia, erythema, and cross, just like dermatocosis. But thing is, in the initial starts are less hairy parts, most important being the penile margin. Okay, we will see the pictures. Okay, you will you can appreciate that how it affects the ear penile is very much characteristics. Starts from hawk elbow where there is in, uh, any hair, ventral or less hair, ventral abdomen where there is less hair. So those parts will be affected first. One of thing, then it will spread to all of the all of the over the body. But usually the dorsum of bag is spared. Okay, the, the hair will be present in the dots of the back, the rest of the hair hairless. We will see some pictures so that you can appreciate. Okay, see, this is the picture of scabies. See the ear, entirely allopathic, allopathic. No hair follicle is there. Okay, all the hairs have been set. Here you see the ear, there is no hair. All are lesions of sarcoptic means. And uh, as I told, the dorsum of body have only have will have hair see all the parts are hairless here hairless here hairless okay the dorsum of the body will have hairs this is very much characteristic to the sarcoptic mange okay let us see some other photographs see this is the sarcoptic mite okay it is usually visible under 40x okay you have to sort the uh, mites under 40x objective and remember it is in deep skin scraping is honestly it is still difficult to find dermatex is comparatively easy to find but sarcoptics are very difficult to find so how you will diagnose the dermatocosis and sarcoptics i told you some symptoms like if your pina is uh, affected first you should suspect for the scabies okay and uh, this see the most important is skin scraping examination for both of them, skin scraping examination is the diagnostics. You can easily find dermatex. For a sarcoptics, you may not easily find, but take sample from different parts of the uh, body. Okay, if you have four to five lesions, from take some samples from each of the lesion, you may find the sarcoptics mite. Another thing, the scratch test or penile pillar reflex test, it can be applied for a scabies with 80% accuracy. Okay, what you have to do? Simply hold the ear. Okay. Simply hold the ear between your fingers. Simply move your fingers. Okay. It will elicit a each reflex or you can say the animal will try to each that part. So to each, it will move each or her hind limb to for each. Okay. To scratch that place. This is known as scratch test or you can say penal pedal reflex. That means if you are disturbing this pina, then the limbs will get disturbed. Okay, this penal pedal reflex, they has 80% accuracy to diagnose the scabies. If you are not finding the lesion in microscope, you can do this test to know the scabies. You have to differentially diagnose hypersensitivity skin disorders like atopic. Atopic usually not easy to diagnose. After all the treatments, then you will suspect for the atopic in field condition. But in laboratory, you may find some agents. We will discuss regarding the atopic dermatitis in subsequent classes. I will tell about the procedures. Next, uh, endocrinopathy like hypothyroidism and hyperadenocorticism that is causing disease. We will also discuss regarding those two diseases in subsequent classes. Pyoderma, I have already discussed. Malassezia, we will also discuss in subsequent classes. In the next class, actually, we will go for fungal dermatitis. There, we will discuss about malassezia and the dermatophytes. Those two are most common fungal dermatitis. Okay. So, this is how you can diagnose the condition. Now, the treatment principle. You see, treatment of the ticks, mites, uh, sorry, ticks, flea and lice is comparatively easy. Only you have to give some topical solution. But here, it is very very difficult to get rid of the demodex and the sarcoptis. So you have some treatment principles. Through those principles, you should start your treatment. So first is the protocol should be continued for at least one month beyond the time when two consecutive skin scraping tests are negative. Okay, so we have to conduct the skin scraping examination at the interval of seven days or fifteen days, whatever you may feel like. Okay, if your patient compliance is very very good, 
then you can do in seven days so you have to be cautious to uh, at least prolong the therapy beyond one month when the second skin scrubbing test is negative okay this is the principle you, you see there is a research actually this is a research in dogs you will find clinical improvement after one to one and a half months in case of demodex this was a resource for demodecosis demodecosis in dogs okay demodecosis in case of dogs so what they found the clinical improvement will be seen after 1 to 1.5 months of treatment so what happens when the clinical improvement we will find the owner will find usually treatment will be discontinued at this stage okay so you have to counsel your owner very nicely regarding the treatment protocol so what was found the first negative was found after 1.5 to 2 months okay the even this duration you may find your first negative okay not consecutive negative first negative may come in this months okay and most patient needed approximately 3 months of treatment is very long treatment okay so some uh, also this research article there was a portion where in depicted it may go up to as long as 6 months see how long is this for treatment of demodecosis this is a very long treatment patient compliance is very very essential okay many in animal cases in, in human patients they know that that they have to take medicines medicines but in canine cases or feline cases it patient compliance is really really poor okay but the, if the owner is educated and you have to come you have counseled him very very nicely then it may they may prolong the treatment up to the desired level okay or desired time period next principle is underlying cause should be treated if there is some underlying cause like the endocrinopathy there is hypothyroidism or hyperadrenocorticism you have to treat them first okay next this is very important in case of demodecosis corticosteroid therapy should be stopped corticosteroids cause immunosuppression through which demodecosis can flare up okay and also demodecosis and hyperadrenocorticism can coexist okay in that case also you have to stop the corticosteroid therapy so better stop the corticosteroid therapy Next, if there is secondary infection and you have signs like fever, anorexia, then you have to treat them first. After that, go for the uh, demodecosis treatment or the scabies treatment. Now, let us go to our treatment protocol. So, in treatment, we have topical and systemic. For topical treatment, you can have the animal to bathe with benzyl peroxide shampoo in every 3 to 7 days. And also you can use Omitra solution 0 0.0252 to 0.3%. You see, this is simply a concentration in the packet itself. It is written how much ml to add in case of ticks, mites, and trees. Okay, so you can add accordingly, and uh, you can use it every two weeks. And also you can use fipronil spray. It comes uh, readily available in the market in every two weeks. This is a product which may or may not available i found this in internet metflumizole metaflumizole and omitraz combination this is spoton that is it is coming as spoton you can use for two weeks if you are finding this product this product also has good cure rate okay next some systemic treatment what are the systemic treatment that can be given uh, sorry this is demodecosis okay <laughs> so the these are the drugs the dose rate for the demodecosis dose rate for the scabies remember the ivermectin first is ivermectin ivermectin you have to use 0.2 to 0.6 mg per kg body weight orally daily 24 hour interval okay for demodecosis if you are confirming the disease the demodecosis then go for this another thing if you are using the higher dose rate suppose you need or you decided you will give the animal the ivermectin as a dose rate of 0.5 mg per kg do not immediately start as 0.5 mg per kg there is every chance the animal will develop the signs of toxicity what are the signs of toxicity signs of toxicity of uh, ivermectin is depression the animal will be depressed the animal will be disoriented 
disorientation and you will find in coordination these are the signs of ivermectin toxicity okay so what to do start with 0.1 mg per kg body weight on day 1 day 1 by each day you may increase 0.1 mg 0.1 then 0.2 0.3 and then 0.5 after you have reached 0.5 then continue for 0.5 or you can do like 2 days for 2 days 0.1 mg for 2 days 0.2 like that but in book you will find the book which i am referring this fall animal dermatology by elsevier so in that book all the pictures are also from that book there is very nice book so written that you should increase the dose daily 0.1 then 0.2 0.3 0.4 0.5 then continue for the 0.5 okay so that you can minimize the risk of developing the ivermectin toxicity the cure rate according to research is 85 to 90% still 10% is there which may not get cured okay so it's all right <laughs> so so you understood how you should give the ivermectin okay in case of scabies the dose rate is slightly less 0.2 to 0.4 mg per kg body weight but the interval is 7 days that is one week interval not like the demodecosis which in which you have to give every day okay so next is milvemycin oxime i think the brand name is sentinel like that sentinel you can give the milvemycin milvemycin oxime in case of demodecosis the dose rate is 0.5 mg per kg body weight orally 24 hour interval the cure rate according to research is 85 to 9% percent, 90% same as the ivermectin so in case of scabies you can go for 0.75 mg per kg body weight orally daily for 30 days or you can go for weekly doses like 2 mg per kg per oral you can give weekly for 4 weeks next is doramectin this is doramectin doramectin can be used 0.2 to 0.6 mg per kg body weight subcutaneously in weekly interval q7 days means 7 days interval and the cure rate according to research of that book is known as 85% it can also be used in scabies 0.2 to 0.6 mg per kg body weight subcutaneously in 7 days interval you can give 4 doses or 8 doses according to your terms of treatment usually scabies is more easy to cure than the demodecosis you see here minimum treatment period is 3 months okay 3 months or you can say clinical improvement you may find after 1.5 months or like 2 months okay but here you may find improvement within one month or within four weeks okay so it is kind of easy to treat this cabbage rather than the demodecosis okay now we'll go some research articles okay so the research article regarding the parasitic dermatitis are very very less okay because you see ivermectin is still working fine okay so there isn't much research the research is basically whether the isoxazolins which i told you to control the tick mite a tick flea and a lice whether they can be effective against the mites so research was based on that or how they are effective how better they can do than the uh, already existing like omitraz and ivermectin solution okay uh, obintraz and ivermectin combination okay so let us go to the our research articles this is a research article efficacy of oral apoxolanet for the treatment of canine generalized demodicosis okay this is apoxolana uh, this is isoxazolins which is basically used for the control of tick flea and uh, lice okay so the research was conducted in france in 2016 here they compared the oral apoxolana versus the imidacloprid and moxidectin spot it was found that oral apoxolana was better than that uh, spot okay it is single they are not using ivermectin or any other treatment only single next this is the article from india actually diagnosis and therapeutic management of canine demodicosis in saurashtra region of gujarat which is india this study was conducted in 2022 previous year so what they did they created four groups group 1 as a control which having the healthy animals group 2 they have treated group 2 3 4 are diseased animals which have demodicosis in group 2 they used the combination of omitraz and ivermectin in group 3 they used saffron oil and tablet this is the essential oil in group iv they used 
the pleural laner. Okay, this is the isoxazole. So they found that after the result was the group two was the best for treatment for the demodocosis, which is combination of omitraz and the ivermectin. In group four, followed by the group four, which are the pleural laner. Pleural laner is basically comes as spoton and also tablet. Okay, last one is the group three, the essential oil. Next article, this is the best article in my view. Okay, regarding the resource of isoxazolines. Okay, so the isoxazolines for treating canine demodocosis, sarcoptic mange, and lice infestation, all are covered in single research paper. Okay, so this was conducted in Canada in 2022. It is a previous year article. So what they found, you can read this article. This is a very good article. Number of subject was also more. Okay, so that you can. When this uh, so, uh, study subjects are more, the chances of error is less. So, in the found the canine in canine demodicosis, a one oral or topical dose of fluoralanil, okay, is sufficient enough to get rid of demodicosis. For the apoxalanil, lotilanil, and saralanil, you may need three monthly doses, okay, three tablets at a monthly interval. Usually, these they come in a single packet with three tablets. Single tablet is also available. So for canine sarcoptic mains, I have told you it is very easier to treat than the demodocosis. It was found that just like the uh, demodocosis, the plural laner, you may need, you need only one dose. It may be oral or topical. It comes as also spot. But for the apoxal laner, you need single dose. For loti laner and saral laner, you may need you may need two doses, two monthly doses. Okay. Here for both apoxalanar, lotilanar, and saralanar, you need three doses. But here apoxalanar is you need one dose, and the last lotilanar and saralanar is two more, two doses. Okay, so scabies is comparatively easy to treat than the demodocosis. Next for lice infestation, single dose of everything: one dose of fluoralanar, one dose of saralanar. They are single dose is effective to get rid of this lice infestation. Okay, so this was the last research. Only very few research articles, but this is a very good research article. You can follow up in the Google also. It is available in Google. You can download the PDF. You can read up on it. So this is all about the parasitic dermatitis. Next class we will be going to discuss the fungal dermatitis, the Malassezia dermatitis, and also the dermatophytosis. These two are very common. There is also other fungal dermatitis. But we will be discussing only common ones. Okay. So till then, tata bye bye. Take care.